Hello, and welcome to The Adrian Ross Show, a product of the BMG Network. So glad you're tuned in at thebmgnetwork.com, the BMG Network's YouTube channel, or a major podcast platform. It's time for another exemplary episode. So here we go. This is such a special episode of The Adrian Ross Show. So I'm glad that you're with me today. We are at the end of October and I did not want to let the month end without a special tribute to pastors because October is Pastor Appreciation Month. Now you may very well be watching this or listening to it after we roll over into November and that's okay because As you're gonna see from what I have to share today, we don't want to just celebrate pastors uh, once uh, a year in October, or some churches do like like my church, uh, Pastor Appreciation Sunday in the midst of Pastor Appreciation Month. Well, a month is not enough. Obviously a day is not enough. And we need to celebrate pastors all the time. So if you're catching this after October, don't feel like you missed out, okay? Make sure that you honor uh, your pastors and that you're a blessing to them and not a burden. <laughs> if we can help it. Sometimes we are burdens to them and, and they just they just deal with it so well. And, and uh, they're gifted. They're gifted to, to do that. And I am so grateful for my pastors. And I want to take time today to honor them um, and, and actually, I've been blessed to have had wonderful pastors throughout my walk with God. Um, I, I have always been under the, the leadership of, of people who have a, a heavy call of God on their lives, a prophetic, um, apostolic call of God upon their lives, um, evangelical call upon their lives. I mean, I, I really have been have been blessed. And so I'm very grateful for the pastors uh, in my life. Now, if you're, if you're listening to this and you're not a part of a church, this may totally not make sense to you, but for sure, um, those people who, who know the Lord should appreciate what, I, where I'm coming from today and why I, I want to take this time. Now, I, I want to honor my pastors here in Missouri, where I live, Southeast Missouri. And uh, we have Pastor Zach Strong. Our, my pastor is Pastor Zach Strong, Mrs. Diane Strong, his wife. Uh, they're such a blessing. And they're overseers, the, the, the prophets in the house. We have Pastor Pastor Val Treese and, uh, and his wife, Pastor Miss Sherry Treese. And what a blessing they are. And, and I just want to say this concerning, concerning um, you know, Pastor Zach, uh, when I came to Christ Church of the Heartland, where I attend, you know, I'm this, this, this young, well, I say young, not so young woman from New York, where I was very much grounded in my church. And, um, and so it's not easy to, to get up, to move from, from New York, upstate New York, and then come to, to uh, Missouri and trying to find a church where you, you know, where you feel that, that you're supposed to be. I'm, I just know in my life that God has me under ministries, has had me under ministries where there is a certain depth in the spirit because I needed to be and need to be somewhere where I'm going to be challenged and I'm going to be uh, directed. I'm going to be taught. I'm going to be pastored. I'm going to be mentored. I'm going to have people who are able to speak into my life because of the call of God that's on my life. And, and I don't say that to pat myself on the back or anything like that. It just, it just is what it is. And throughout my walk with the Lord, since, uh, especially since, since I've been filled with the spirit, you know, since God filled me with the baptism of the Holy ghost all, all those years ago, um, he's had me in places um, where there were people who recognized the call of God, no matter where I was, they, they were there were pastors who sensed the call of God upon my life and spoke into that and encouraged that and covered me in prayer. And again, I don't say that to make anything big in, in and of myself. It just is, again, what it is. And so I'm so grateful for that. 
and I've and I've always I've never been somewhere long before uh, those pastors recognized that and um, and I and I and I'm thankful for that. You know, I think left to my own devices over the years, I might have uh, I might have taken a back seat. I might have ran in the other direction far. I've gone through some stuff where I was just a straight hot mess, you know. But um, but because there were people who were speaking into my life and 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 holding me accountable, um, you know, I'm on the journey still. You know, I'm on the journey, and I'm and I'm very appreciative of that. So, um, I've always been where, wherever God has me in church. When I was um, when I graduated from college, and and I'm at in the church, and then. Um, the church that I was in um, when I left when I left New York all all those years it, it's like it's just been it's just been an amazing uh, journey and the Lord has always had me in the core I, I don't want, I have never been uh, nor have I ever desired to be one of those people who just kind of show up at church and show up you check in you kind of go do your time and then you leave. It's just not who I am. And it's it's just not who I want to be either. And it's not what God has for me. So I'm so grateful for my pastors. And I just want to share a little bit about when I came to Christ Church of the Heartland, again, coming from upstate New York, a church that I absolutely loved, a pa pastors that I absolutely love and still love and still say my New York pastor, they are family to me. They have sown into me. They have walked with me through um, some tough times and you know, just when I was just going through and, and, and just refused to, um, to believe anything but the best in me. And I'm grateful. So you, I leave that when I moved to New York and uh, several years ago, not moved from New York several years ago. And it's like, where do I find a place that's, that's home? And so, um, I, I always believe in spiritual covering. And when we talk about pastor appreciation, I, I believe in pastors. I believe there is such a thing as spiritual covering. I believe that Christians should go to church, su should submit to pastoral authority, you know, and should allow people to speak into our lives, to correct us, to encourage us, all those things, right? And so I come to Christ Church of the Heartland from a church that I just absolutely loved and had been there many years and was in ministry and 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 leadership there. And um, I come here and I said, "Listen, I need. I don't know where what church is going to be for me, and I need, I believe in that covering. And so my pastor's back home in New York. I need you guys to be covering me. I'm under your covering. I want to be. You know, I was going to to um, a church with a friend." And uh, that church has an, uh, a wonderful spirit of excellence, and and it and um you know and God is doing great things there. It just wasn't necessarily home for me. I wasn't sure that it was home for me, and I made sure that those pastors knew that that please be praying with me as I seek God where I should be. So at some point after I, I came to Missouri, in November. And I was going to this church with my friend, and then I decided uh, it was right before it was it was um, Palm Sunday. It was Palm Sunday of 2014. I got here in November of 2013, so it was um, Palm Sunday of 2014, and I visited this church, and uh, I didn't know someone who was going there, and uh, it, it was such an amazing service. And as was the case when I was back in New York at the church that I was in, I went to this church one time. I'm thinking I'm going to go, okay, God, lead me, guide me. Let's see where I go. I'll go check out some churches. I, I, and first time there. And I knew that this is where I was supposed to be. That was Palm Sunday. I, I remember that. Well, I knew that this is where I was supposed to be. And I'm also one of those people who believes that, I, I believe that people, you know, too often people just up and leave church. They just, they, they just decide to go somewhere else after they've been there or they got an attitude about something. I don't know. People just, and, and some just kind of float, you know, they bounce from church to church. I, I don't, I don't believe in that. Um, but I believe in doing things properly. And so I wanted 
to sit down with the leadership of this church for them to hear my heart, for them to get to know me, for me to get to know them, to know, for them to know, listen, I've been coming for a few weeks now. I really feel this is what God, uh, where God has led me. And I wanted them to talk to my pastor from New York. I believe in that also. And so that you're transferred from one church to another. And so the pastor, Pastor Zach, he was, I believe, going to be in St. Louis that day, but I met with the uh, one of the, the pastors there, Pastor Kim Ferguson um, and, uh, and Pastor uh, Judy, and we sat down and we talked and uh, before it was all over, they're praying for me and, and speaking into my life and what the Lord, you know, what the Lord was going to do in my life. And it was just such a confirmation um, of that. And then later I, I, I um, fi found out that they did use that phone number I gave them and called my pastor so that they could they could know who I was. I always say it's good to know what you get, you know, and that um, I'm not running because some people run from church to church. They, they, they cause uh, they raise Hades at one church and they go somewhere else. And uh, but I believe in and and doing things the proper way. And I believe that, you know, my pastor from New York, <laughs> Pastor Jerome Halstead, I figured he'd, he'd tell them whatever they needed to know, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know. And uh, but I came, I guess, highly recommended. And so I appreciate that. And um, and so, again, October is Pastor uh, Appreciation Month. And it, it's just such a it's so important that we love our pastors that we submit to their, uh, to their, to godly leadership, that we pray for them. And uh, it's difficult for pastors, for pastors' wives. It's, um, you know, some people have a day off and, you know, sometimes pastors say, oh, you know, Monday is my day off, but they truly don't have a, a day off. They're always, good pastors are always there. They're always praying. They're always concerned about the flock, intending to the flock, meaning the people God has entrusted them to. And so, I am my pastors, Pastor Zach, Miss Diane, uh, Pastor Val, and, and Miss Sherry. They are second to none. You know, they um, they love, they preach the word with fire, with power, with prophetic anointing, and um, and they persevere. You know, it it can't. It, I know it's not easy to be a pastor, and um, and sometimes they. I'm sure they have to encourage themselves, but. I have been blessed because my pastors are top notch people who love the Lord. They are passionate about the Lord. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful. It challenges me. And, uh, and they preach the word of God right now in the time that we, we're living in. I mean, it's a, it's a mess in our culture. We're believing God for a turnaround, but it's a, it's something else in our culture. And, and it's a mess in some of these so-called churches also. So I, I just want to encourage you. I know that sometimes there are people who say, well, I don't need to go to church. I don't need that. I don't, I don't need that. And I'm talking about people who, you know, supposedly are believers, but they don't need the church. So they say they don't have to go to church. I want to address that because, um, because we do. There's a reason that the word of God tells us forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, even the more as we see the day approaching. The Bible declares that as we as we reach toward the as we are in the end times, we we have to assemble together. There's fellowship in what we call the body of Christ, in the family of God. And there are pastors. The Bible says he has given us pastors, right? So past having pastors absolutely matters, right? And so for those who say, I don't need a pastor and I don't need the church, let me address that, okay? Let's just put it this way. If you were right, <laughs> which you're not, <laughs> but let's just pretend you're right and you don't need the church, okay? Maybe it's not about what you need. Maybe it's about the fact that God has placed things within you, gifts, talents, calling, whatever, service, that he's placed within you that other people need. See how we think? 
We think it's all about what we need. Oh, I don't, I don't need to go to church. That's for those other people. They need to go to church. I love God. I worship God. I'm, you know, my pastor's online, whatever. I don't need to be connected to a church. I don't need to be under the spiritual covering of a, of a pastor. I'm, I'm cool. I don't need that. Again, you're wrong, number one, but let's pretend you're not. What about what the body of Christ needs? What about the fact that there's a pastor who needs your prayers? There's a ministry that needs your, your help. There's an area of service that you can fulfill, okay? No better time than Pastor Appreciation Month to have this conversation. So that's number one. If you don't need, which you do, but if you don't need, maybe you're needed. Maybe that's why the Bible says not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Maybe, just maybe, the Bible knows more than we know and understands that we need you. But let's go on the second one, which I've kind of alluded to throughout. You need the church. And the people who don't think they need the church need the church more than everybody. Because if you honestly don't think you need that fellowship and you need that spiritual covering and you need someone to preach the word to you and to keep you on track and to encourage you, if you don't believe that, then you really need the church because you're, you're lacking understanding. We honor our pastors, their blessings. Why would you not? Why? Why would you stay out from underneath that, that covering that God has ordained specifically for you? And I know the pandemic caused some people to get away from the brick and mortar church and do the online thing. And I don't mean to disparage the online church because it has been a blessing and I'm not talking about just through the, you know, the pandemic or whatever, um, when churches, you know, some agreed to shut down. I know there were some who agreed to shut down, including ours, who then said, you know what, we're never doing this again. And then there were those who said, we're not shut down. And they were willing to pay that price. But, but that was a time where a lot of people were um, watching church online, listening to pastors preach online. And a lot of people came to know the Lord during that time. So I'm not trying to put down that time at all. But I am saying that that's not the, the ideal way to have fellowship and to have church. You come out, you sit in your pajamas, you go into the living room, or even you get dressed, you go in the living room and you do that time after time after time. That's not the plan because the pastor on the, on the online thing is not pastoring you. You're watching online church, you know? I think it has been a blessing, but I also think that it has been one of and I'm not going to say curse, but it has been one of the biggest hindrances in people's lives. I really believe that because there are people who now I'm not going to church. I'm just going to watch online. You know, whereas, it, you know, for for some people, it's a blessing because they're going through something right now physically and they can't get there, you know, or. You know, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but there, there are times when we when we just can't make it out of the house, you know, and so we were able to, to tune in. But for so many people, it's become the thing to do. OK, I'm going to do this from now on or I'm going to do this once or twice a month and I'm just going to catch it on. It's not the same. There really is something called the corporate anointing. There really is something about, you know, like the word of God says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So, again. Online church has its benefits, I guess, but it's not ideal. We and and you and the guy that you're watching, or the woman that you're watching, the pastor that you're watching, who's sitting, who's in front of their congregation of people they pastor, they're not pastoring you if if your connection with them is only by turning on the television once or twice a week. We need these pastors who pour into us, who are praying for us. The Bible says we do, and I tend to believe the Bible is true. Now, let me deal with something else that I have dealt with before, okay? And that is when people say, um, I don't need to go to church. Like, I, you know, I can praise God at home. You guys have heard that before. 
I can, I can praise the Lord at home. I don't need to go to church. And we could and should be praising the Lord at home. We shouldn't, we could and we should be praising the Lord at home. But you ever notice, and I've shared this before, and you may have heard me say this before, you ever notice that no one ever says, like you can't find a person who loves the party. And that person will say, I don't need to go to the party. I don't need to go to the club. I can dance at home. <laughs> I mean, you can't even say it without laughing because it's true. Nobody says that. Because why? Because if you love the party, if you love the club, we're going to find you at the club with other people who enjoy clubbing and partying. It just makes sense. So it is with church. When you love the Lord and you love his presence and you understand and appreciate the pastors that he's placed within the body of Christ, you don't say, I don't need to go to church. I can worship the Lord at home. No, the people who love the party, you catch them at home. Music is on. They're partying. People who love the Lord, same thing. They're at home praising the Lord. But they're also in the house of the Lord where these pastors that we're honoring are also gathered. So if your mindset is, I don't need to go there, I can do it at home, then you're going to have to check your heart. Because there should be, I mean, there are times, you know, we all have times where we're just like, man, I don't feel like going anywhere today. I don't feel like, going. I mean, but that's like the exception. If you always feel like that and you never want to be a part of a church, you never want to have a pastor, then you're going to have to check your heart because something is off. Because when we are hungry, we always eat. And it's generally a sign of sickness when we don't have an appetite. And I'm talking about in the natural. When the one of the first things that goes, if you happen to get sick, which I'm not claiming because I'm not allowed <laughs> by faith. So, but, but if you happen to get sick, um, you know, hypothetically somebody, you know, happens to get sick, you know, what goes? Appetite. When you start to feel better, what returns? Appetite. Same thing in the church because the, the spiritual and the, and the natural, you know, they parallel one another. When we are, when we are healthy, when we are whole, you know, in our walk with the Lord, not perfect. My goodness. No, we got all kinds of issues, right? We're supposed to bring our issues with us though, right? And let the Lord and let, you know, pastors help and let the Lord bring what we need, right? But when you are healthy in the Lord and that you have a relationship with the Lord, there's that appetite for his presence, for his people, for his leadership, right? And one more thing here. I don't know how I feel like I, you know, I'm honoring pastors, but I'm talking to I'm talking to us regular folk as I do that. Here's another thing. Sometimes I, you hear people say, you know what? I don't. There's no church where I where I live. There's there's no church for me. You know where 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 I where I live. You know I moved and I you know, there's no church and so I'm you know I'm just gonna I'm just just staying at home right now. And, you know, and I'm like, mm. well, I'm going to tell you what I think about that. Number one, how long ago was that? You know, 10 years ago, you tried to find church and there wasn't one. And then you just decided you ain't going no more. Really? Why don't you look again? <laughs> That's the first thing. The second thing is this. Ultimately, Adrian, Chapter one, verse one, I guess, right? I don't, it, it, one of two things is the deal. Number one, either uh, there is a church and you haven't found it or you stopped looking or whatever, um, or then you ain't living where you're supposed to be living. And God didn't call you to live there. Well, that's kind of bold. How do you know where God called me to live? Because, I, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of spiritual discernment to know that the Lord has not placed you somewhere where there's no church. When his word says go to church, it doesn't make sense. He'd have to be a liar. And we know God is not. So there is a church there or you're in the wrong spot. Now, which one is it? Again, I'm going to repeat this. The Lord has not placed you somewhere where there is not a church, where there is not a, a family 
of people of faith. I'm talking, I mean, and I'm talking about a church where you're going to grow, where you're going to be fed the truth, okay, where people are standing on the word of God, where people are worshiping God, uh, where the spirit of the Lord is welcome and moving and filling and flowing, there, and, and where there are pastors, pastors like we're talking about today, who are going to, to, who stand for righteousness and who love the people of God they've been entrusted with. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. And so, yeah, I'm saying that if you can honestly say there's no church for me to go to at all here, then you in the wrong place because the Lord didn't call you to move somewhere where there ain't no church and then tell you not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Both of them can't be this true, and the Lord don't have a split personality. Excuse my bad English, okay? Or, you know, there is a church, but you are not going. <laughs> you are maybe not looking. Uh, maybe you did look, and there didn't seem to be one then. Do it again. Try it again. Go back again. It's, it's, it's that important. It's that important. And so I said all that, first of all, because I, I want us in honoring pastors, I have to honor our need of pastors and their need of us. Because remember, it's not just about what we need. It's about others. It's about pouring out. You might very well feel that you don't need pastors. You do. You might feel that you don't. But what about your pa the pastors needing you? What about the church needing you? What about um, the Sunday school department needing you? The children's ministry needing you? The greeters needing you? The prayer team needing you? You know, what about you being home interceding for uh, the church, for the body of Christ, for your pastors? It's so important. God did not give us pastors for us to do it alone. I am. I'm, I want to. I want to make that clear today that we need pastors. And I really want to make clear today that I am so thankful for every pastor I have had in my life to bring me to this point where I am now and who will walk with me to where I am going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I cannot thank you enough. I can't. And I mean that with all my heart. I am so grateful. And to my pastor, Pastor Zach, to Miss Diane, Mrs. Diane, to Pastor Val and Mrs. Sherry, thank you so much for receiving me into Christ Church of the Heartland, for, uh, I, for praying for me, for welcoming me, and for, you know, I've been going through some really difficult times, as many people know, had brain surgery uh, in the end of April, been having a lot of issues. I had some issues before then, but I've had some painful issues since then. And um, man, it's easy to get discouraged. But when you have people who know God, and you know, love you and are praying for you. And, you know, and still, even though you're struggling, um, they, they still see the call of God upon you and remind you of who you are in Christ. It means so much. And, and, and my pastors, they just, they just love. They just love. They love me, but it's not just me. They love those who don't know the Lord. They're in prayer for those who don't know the Lord. You know, they, they love, um, they, they love, they love the people of God and they love those who don't know God yet. And their heart is to see those people come to know the Lord and to see those of us who know the Lord to get closer to the Lord. And their desire is to preach the word. And I am so blessed because they are people of the word, that logos word, that written word, and that rhema word, where they're, they're speaking forth the breath of God, the prophetic word 
of the Lord. We are Christ Church of the Heartland, a spirit-filled church. We believe in the, the gifts of the Holy Ghost, and we, uh, we preach with the power of the Holy Ghost, and we are also, um, my pastors are so involved in what's going on in the region and not, and with other denominations, you know, and that's another thing. Like I said, we are a prophetic ministry and, you know, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost and all that, all that other stuff. And yet there, there are other churches that's, that's not where they are, you know, and, and, and I have pastors who we're just, this is the body of Christ. This is the, this is the family of God. There's no competition here. There's no, you know, we are the family of God. And so all of us, when Jesus is the core, you know, all of us can come together and our pastors do that. My Pastor Zach and Miss Diane have such a vision and such a calling for our region. And so once a month, um, pastors throughout the region from, from various states are coming and we're worshiping together, which is something that separates um, and causes me to honor my past, separates my pastors so much from, from many and also causes me to honor them even more because the cry of their hearts is let unity, unity, unity. And, um, and we need that. There, there should be no competition. Some folks don't do that. They don't get together with other churches because they're so afraid that some pastor is going to steal their, you know, their church members. Ain't nobody got time for that. You know, what we want is to see the kingdom of God advance. And the reason why we as the body of Christ, the church at Christ Church of the Heartland have that heart, um, because that's what we see. That's what we experience. That's the culture of the kingdom that you can find at our church. And it has to do with the leadership. It's from the top down. It flows down. And I'm grateful to be among those who call Christ Church of the Heartland home and who call Pastor Zach, Pastor, and Pastor Val, our overseer. And I thank you all, you and Mrs. Diane and Mrs. Sherry, for all you are in my life and for living what you preach, for walking the walk and not just talking talk, but hey, it's not just Adrian who appreciates our pastors. Um, we have so, so many of us just absolutely love our pastors and want to honor our pastors. And that's exactly what many of them did. Now, I wasn't able to get to everyone, but I was able to, to uh, get to some and ask them to, to, reach, to share with our pastors via video what they think of them, how they appreciate them, however they wanted to express themselves as we focus in on pastor appreciation. So you're gonna you're going to Pastor Zach and Pastor Val and 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 your beautiful wives, you're going to hear the hearts of people who honor you, who love you, and uh, who just uh, just believe the best for you. And just appreciate you. So I want you to enjoy this video in which you get to hear our hearts. Hey, Pastor Miss Diane, we are so grateful for your leadership and guidance to our church and to our family. Happy Pastor Appreciation Pastor Month. Pastor Diane Strong, the First Lady of Christ Church, is synonymous with the word excellence because everything she touches is excellent. Since I had the privilege of working with her and Pastor Zach over 13 years, I have a season to share with you. Miss Diane is involved in every ministry and brings it to a higher level, which allows a greater impact for Christ Church in the community. She is an effective prayer warrior and has set the captive free in numerous times. As an excellent teacher, she researches and studies and brings forth gold to her students. God has graciously gifted her in the area of finance and integrity. She and God has miraculously brought Christ Church through to prosperity and respect in the community these 25 years. Pastor Diane, we love and appreciate you so much. 
The best is yet to come. We're looking for the next 25. Love, prayers, and blessings to you and your family. For Pastor Appreciation Month, I just wanted to say thank you to Pastor Val and Miss Sherry. I truly appreciate the father's heart and the mother's heart that you have. Um, I really enjoy Sherry's warm hugs. Uh, when she hugs me, I just feel like melting into her. She's truly a mother. She truly has a heart that is giving, loving, kind. And Pastor Val, I really appreciate your mentorship um, of the house and just the congregation. And, and um, although sometimes you can come across a little bit stern, you always correct with love. You always correct with a heart of love, just as Jesus did. Um, so I just wanted to stop and say thank you. Thank you for being the mother and the father that you are, not only to your own children, but to so, so many more. God bless. To know Pastor Val Trees is to love him. He is, he is joyful and he is powerful and he is anointed and everything about his personality is contagious. You know that whenever you're around him that he is someone that you want to pour into you. You want to be able to glean the wisdom that he has. And so we are just so thankful for you, Pastor Val. We are thankful for your bravery, for your sensitivity to the spirit, and then the way that you just deliver to us what God has spoke to you. And so we honor you uh, this month and every day moving forward and every day before we just want to th say thank you for everything that you do for us all the words that you impart into us and you are personally one of my favorites so I love you and thank you so much for for just being who God has intended you to be Adrian asked me to uh, do a brief video expressing our Thanks and appreciation for you. You are an amazing Christian woman, so loving, so kind, and so caring. We appreciate you so much for your willingness to mentor other people, to counsel them, to help them along their way. And even when it becomes hard and frustrating, you never give up on them, and you, you are always willing to help them and share your wisdom and your guidance with them. Not only are you a sister in Christ with me, you are also a very dear friend. I thank God often for you and Pastor Val that he sent you to us and to our church. You are such a blessing. I pray that your latter days will be greater than your former days. I pray that you live in divine health, great wisdom and great wealth, that God grants you the desires of your heart and continues to bless you, provide for you, and protect you. I was going to share a short, funny story about you, but my time's about up. But I was going to tell the people about the day that you lost your soul on the floor of the church. Of course, I'm talking about your shoe soles. So uh, I'll leave that up to you to tell them the whole story. God bless you, and we love you, dear. Hi, Pastor Zach and Miss Diane. I just love that y'all are so kind to everyone, and I really love that y'all don't really judge anyone before you get to know them, and I love that y'all are very kind, and I just wanted to tell you this, and I want to make this video so you can understand that I love you with all my heart. I really do. And my mom told me when I was little, and I was one month old or three months old, you used to carry me, and I think that was really cool. And I also love that you are so kind and so nice. I love you. Happy Appreciation Day to you and Pastor Zach and Miss Diane. Bye. When I think about Pastor Diane and Pastor Sherry, what I think about is women that have a love for the body of Christ as well as for the congregation. I really appreciate the love that they've shown me over the years and that I've seen them show other people and the concern to get up into people's lives um, and to speak truth when necessary. They also speak it out of love, um, but they are not afraid to speak truth. And I'm sure they do the same thing to Pastor Val and Pastor Zach when they need it as well. I uh, would also say that I appreciate that um, I found them to listen carefully when I've been sharing something or when they're trying to tell me something. They're, they're, they have been listeners to me. They have also been uh, very devoted to the church. 
as well as devoted to their family. I've seen that in the way that they've interacted with their family, talked about them, as well as devotion to supporting their spouses and supporting us. So I really appreciate you. Hey, Pastor Ben. You are a great, great friend. Um, we've worked together quite a bit. When we uh, was putting in Pastor Zach's windows, and you took a sledgehammer to that window, I thought, what in the world? But you got it in there. So from that moment on, I decided I better kind of, kind of listen to you. Spiritual and through leadership, you have been a great, great friend. And you mean what you say, spiritual and in the carnal mind. So when just around this thing all up, all around, I think you're a great, great guy. And I'm proud to call you a friend. Be blessed. Have a great month. And I speak blessings on you and your family. Happy Pastor Appreciation Month. Um, I am just so blessed with some amazing pastors. And I just think I am so lucky that I've had the same pastors from when I was born. And so I just think I'm so blessed because you guys have always been so supportive. You have always prayed for me. You've always been there for me. You're always asking how I'm doing. And I just feel that love. And then Pastor Val and Ms. Sherry have just been so amazing because they are so intentional about everything. Every time they see me, they ask me how I'm doing or how school or anything. They just always want to know how I am. And so I just feel really blessed that we don't just have pastors who sit and just kind of let things go, but they're so intentional about coming up and asking how you are. And so I know it's not easy and I know they're probably tired of people saying, oh, it's been a horrible week. And, but you know, they take that time to just invest in others. And I think that is so amazing. So happy Pastor Appreciation Month. We love you. Thank you, Pastor Zach and Miss Diane for all the support through the years. I'm really grateful. Pastor Val, we love you. I'm so thankful that you love the Lord, that you love the Holy Spirit, that you honor his presence. We love the way that you love Miss Sherry and your family and this body of believers that you've been planted in. You speak the truth to us in love. The word of God and the way to live, live for the Lord has difficult, challenging things that we need to hear sometimes. And I'm thankful that you have the boldness to speak that to us in love. You fear the Lord and not man. We love you, Pastor Val. We honor you. Happy Pastor Appreciation Month. Thank you, Pastor Zach and Miss Diane, for all you do and all the support you give us. We love you. All right, uh, Pastor Val and Miss Sherry, I want to thank you for all of the kind things and encouragement and prayers that you guys. I'm so ever grateful for you guys and being in our lives and being in my life personally. Um, you've stewarded and loved on me even when I couldn't really even love myself, and I'm greatly appreciative of you. Pastor Zach, where do I begin? 25 years. Wow. You have been my pastor 25 years. And I have appreciated you each and every one. I want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for serving God like you do and for being so real and raw and keeping the word true and never watering it down and holding us accountable for our actions. And it's to let us know that our responsibility and the authority that we have, I thank you so much for being my pastor and keeping the word so true and real and for you being a man of God with such integrity and love and passion. Thank you so much for being my pastor. I love you and your family so very much. Well, I know I'm not from Christ Church or Heartland, but um, that didn't really matter to Pastor Zach. And, and um, just want to say that I really appreciate him very much. And I know it's been about three years and I was going through a season in my life where I felt it was really worn, tired, I guess you can say, but it didn't matter to him. Uh, Pastor Zach, uh, he sold time into me, sent me texts and to help me out and um, to get me restored. And and because um, I tell you, there's seasons we all feel like, you know, quitting or giving up, but he spoke into my life and encouraged me to move forward. And um, I just want to let you know, Pastor Zach, I love you and appreciate you so much and, and everything you've done for us, me and my wife. 
And also too, I'm looking forward to another luncheon at El Torero's and it's my treat. Uh, anything off the $2 menu is fine. No, nah, just kidding. I want to bless you. So uh, we'll get together soon for the luncheon. God bless Pastor Zach. Hey, Pastor Zach and Miss Diane. Uh, this is a great opportunity to tell you how much we appreciate your leadership, your guidance, and your passion to serve the Lord. Thank you so much for being such a great example for all of us. Um, I just love to see how you love people and how you care about everyone. It is a, such a great privilege and honor to be able to call you my pastors. Thank you, and we love you so much. Pastor Val and Ms. Sherry, when I think of you, the words that come to mind are these. Wisdom inside of your hearts is like water in a deep well. Dot, dot, dot. Ponder up on that. The Lord has definitely used you in a tremendous way to position the remnant prophetically. There is no doubt about it. Uh, probably the most valuable thing I've ever learned from both of you is how to effectively fight against the kingdom of darkness. Uh, before you came on the scene at Christ Church of the Heartland, I did not have full revelation about spiritual authority, and I did not understand how to use God's power to live a victorious Christian life. The revelation that you have brought to this topic has radically changed my life in a way that words cannot fully express. Um, I am grateful, 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 grateful for what you have brought to the table on this topic. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Not only do I appreciate what you have brought uh, to my life, but I also genuinely just enjoy being in your presence. So I love and appreciate both of you. Thank you so much. I love that you don't just share God's word with us and teach us God's word in your messages, but you also demonstrate God's word to us in your actions and the way that you live your life. And that is so awesome to me. And I will tell anyone who will listen that Pastor Zach is my pastor. I think it's so awesome the way you demonstrate God's word by actually connecting with people in the congregation and then even outside the congregation and how you bring leaders together from all different congregations together even to different denominations and you're not just our pastor you're a pastor to a whole group of pastors and that is so awesome we love you pastor Zach. we love you pastor Zach. thank you pastors thank you pastors thank you pastors thank you pastors, thank you, pastors. Thank you, pastors. Thank you, pastors. Thank you, pastors. Thank you, pastors, so much. Thank you, pastors. Love and appreciate you. As you can see, we just cannot thank you enough. Thank you, pastors. And that is absolutely special. And um, you could hear, you could see um, how much people appreciate um, our pastors at Christ Church of the Heartland. And um, I'm sure if I had gone to more people and asked them to do the, the video thing, we, we would be here for, for a long time. And um, yeah, we, it would have been a, it would have been all day, all night affair. And so we couldn't do that, but please know that we do all appreciate you so very, very much. And, uh, and not just in October and not just this last, uh, the last Sunday of October, but every day, we're very, very grateful. And I, I just pray that those of you who are listening, you would do something special for your pastors. And if you, if you didn't do anything for Pastor Appreciation Month, Pastor Appreciation Month or Sunday or whatever, you know, it's not too late. You can still get them a card, take them to lunch, or give them give them a, a restaurant gift card, or you know whatever. They're they're always um, you know there are always things that, that that we can do to show appreciation, even if we you know missed October. And I'm sure there are some of you who are listening who absolutely did um, celebrate Pastor Appreciation with your congregation as well. So I want to reiterate: get into a church that loves the Lord, that's on fire for God. They have pastors. You're not going to find them as good as my pastors, <laughs> but you're welcome to Christ Church in the Heartland um, if you don't have a church home. And uh, 
but uh, but get into a church with some pastors, some good pastors who are going to do the covering for you. When I say do the covering, I mean they're covering you in prayer. They're covering you with that spiritual umbrella that God has given them to cover you with. All right. So I am going to sign off right now. And I just want to say thank you, everyone, for tuning into this bonus episode of the Adrian Ross Show. This is an episode in addition to our weekly episode that comes out every Tuesday. So I will catch you on our regular episode of the Adrian Ross Show. But thank you for tuning into this special bonus. God bless you. The Adrian Ross Show was produced and edited in the BMG studio. The music was provided by Kevin McLeod. Find more episodes of The Adrian Ross Show at thebmgnetwork.com and major podcast platforms. Be sure to tune in regularly. You don't want to miss even one episode.